Welcome to the inaugural episode of Everything Mayor. Uh, if you subscribed already and you're one of those original subscribers that either came from my main channel or just found this channel, I sincerely appreciate that. Here we go. This is kind of what I've been waiting for. We've got some big John Mayer news, and that's what this channel is all about. Uh, my other channel is all guitar stuff, all music industry stuff, and I need to be a little bit more organized there. But here, here, we're just going to hang out and really enjoy our John Mayer fandom uh, with no shame whatsoever. So today we got a massive announcement, and we're going to talk about it. You know what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. Dead & Company at the Sphere in Las Vegas. Uh, I know you know what this venue is. Of course, it's the giant ball in Vegas that U2 is playing right now. Uh, rumors have it. Rumors say that we might be getting a 15-show, 14, 15-show residency sometime in May. Um, I think Fish is going to be playing there beforehand. But, of course, um, very cool. Now, I think they actually did this. I don't think that's photoshop uh or you know digital effects i think they actually put the logo up on the sphere which is super cool i, I saw it in person i drove by it very cool um so i guess my first question to all you mayor heads out there all you dead heads also uh are you gonna go is it worth it have you seen any of the footage from u2 performing there i have i love u2 i gotta tell you it is tempting um i now listen i love john mayer i love dead and company but uh, I might be more excited to see you two in that setting. Um, however, I think Dead & Company, you know, obviously they're going to do something visually very cool. Um, two totally different shows. A Dead & Company show is never going to be as structured uh, as a U2 show. A U2 show, while it does change, they change the set list here and there. I mean, everything's to a click track. Everything is very um, coordinated between the music and the lights uh, and the video presentation and all of that um, in a way that you can't do with a band like Dead & Company because uh, they are freeform. You know, every night things are different. Tempos are different. They're not going to change that, nor should they. That's why we love that band. So I love the Grateful Dead music. So um, I, I mean... I'm saying I would rather go to a YouTube show there, but I don't know. I mean, like, there's, it's going to be totally different. Fish is going to be the same way. So uh, this is really cool, though. I love this trend. I love this trend that the Sphere in Vegas is starting, which is you've got these acts, these epic acts, who now have a playground to work with, which is unlike any other venue in the world. Um, really cool. So how much do you think these tickets are going to cost? My good buddy Silver Sky Guy on Instagram is already doing some some research, and I saw somewhere in the mid 200s. I think he he found like there was a uh, average ticket price at the Sphere. Uh, it's a big venue, so that that's cool. Uh, it means a lot of people can go see it uh, these shows, which it helps ticket pricing. But it's definitely going to be a premium because these are going to be once in a lifetime shows. Uh, and like I said, I think Dead and Company. Uh, certainly is going to bring it strong when it comes to the visuals. And as we know, John Mayer doesn't, you know, he doesn't get involved in anything that isn't just super deliberate, uh, well thought out, uh, especially aesthetically speaking. Um, you can see it in his solo tour set, his sob rock tour set, uh, you know, basically every, every set uh, that he's used i mean really like since born and raised i mean before that it was cool uh but they were a little more stripped down uh certainly you know technology wasn't the same in 2004 5 6 7 8 9 during those years uh, as it is now but um certainly this is going to be exciting it's going to be cool so main question are you going to go do you want to go if you can't go because not all of us are going to be able to go um uh, but is it something that you really want to go to uh even if you're not a big deadhead you know i'm admittedly not i'm into dead and company because of john mayer how many of you are in that same scenario I, I my guess is if you're watching this and you're subscribed to a channel called everything mayer probably the same thing uh for you that john mayer is your entry point into this music uh very cool i love it i love that so uh but is that enough of a pull to make you fly to vegas get these tickets and go to these shows let me know in the comments. I'm curious. This has been kind of a busy mayor week, and these things get tied together. Uh, that makes sense. He was on 
Conan O'Brien's podcast as well. And that was a really interesting appearance. Uh, before I, I listened to the show, um, which I have comments about Conan's podcast just in general, not not with Mayer, but uh, I mean, these, these two guys in a room together, I was very excited about because I love Conan's brand of humor. I love his work on The Simpsons. I love his late night work. Um, and I love John Mayer's approach to humor and just listening to him talk. So it's like these two guys in a room together, uh, what is going to happen? And it did not disappoint. Uh, I'll just say that. I don't want to ruin it for you, but <laughs> go listen to it. Um, I, I think uh, it was super funny. You get to see Conan be Conan and watching John Mayer weave his own brand of humor and wit into that was uh, was really cool. I will say this, though. Um, that podcast, I, I'd never really listened to much of it before. Uh, it's chopped up, though. If you really try to listen to it from front to back, it's chopped up. There's a ton of ads. Uh, they do a whole segment at the beginning of the show without the guests, which a lot of funny people on the show could carry itself on its own just fine. But when you tune in, uh, you, you know, on your Apple podcast app or whatever app you use, uh, wanting to hear the full hour with that person that you're interested in that they're interviewing, um, you're not going to get that. Tons of ads and it takes a while to get Mayer on the pod. But what are you going to do? That's how they structure it at Conan. I have no guests. I have one episode. What do I have to complain about or criticize anybody for? <laughs> I can't. Uh, guests may be coming. I don't know. We'll see where we go with this. But um, so, yeah. So what I would be curious about is what ended up on the cutting room floor of that podcast with uh, Mayor and Mr. Conan O'Brien. Uh, probably some really funny stuff. Probably some cool stuff. Probably some stuff that they don't want to see the light of day. Uh, and I understand that and that's fine, but we probably never see that, but it's interesting because I think that show is definitely geared towards, you can tell, at least I, I can tell in the full edit, it's definitely geared towards clips, uh, being put on YouTube, um, or wherever for people to consume little five to six minute bites of the show, not necessarily the whole hour, which I'll be doing with this as well. You'll see clips of this. So, you know, again, not criticizing, but busy mayor week, really cool. Um, we're gearing up for the European leg of the solo tour. And I will, if you've listened this far, I will ask you this. Do you think we're going to see anything change on this portion of the tour? Do you think the set is going to be the same with the three locations across the stage, the, the standing, the seated and the piano, um, set lists. Are we still going to be seeing kind of how they were structured before? I know mayor has said, Hey, when you find something that works, keep doing it. And, um, you know, I think he's done that in just like, even just the sequencing of each section of the solo show hasn't really changed that much with the exception of the, uh, blue note Tokyo shows, but that's venue driven and two shows in a night driven. So I think that's why those shows were different. So, uh, personally, I don't think we're going to see anything groundbreaking or totally different on the solo tour in Europe, uh, compared to what we've seen on both legs in North America. I don't think it makes sense to totally change it. I think there's probably a temptation to do that because he's been doing it for so long already, but everybody over in Europe presumably has not seen this show or they've seen clips of it online. So you have to balance between like delivering what they're expecting and what they're excited about um, because that's what they've seen thus far. Uh, and then you got to balance it out with not being boring and just doing the same thing again. So, I mean, who better to figure that out than John Mayer, though? Um, you know, he, he's he's got that on lockdown, I think, as far as somebody who really knows what they want. And that brings me to my last topic for this episode. And that is, uh, like I mentioned at the beginning, I do have another channel. If you came from there, thank you very much. It's just my name, Tom Butwin. Uh, I should have introduced myself. I guess it was kind of presumptuous that you would know who I am. But on this channel, it doesn't matter who I am. It's all about John Mayer, everything Mayer. But uh, on that channel, I did get the opportunity to talk to his good friend, Fred Green from Martin Guitar, uh, about his signature model acoustic guitar that came out in 2023. It's that smoke gray burst uh, on the acoustic. Even if you're not a guitar player, it's definitely a unique color. Definitely uh, kind of sticks out. It's got this sort of like salt and pepper look to it. 
So if you want uh, a little insight into the way John Mayer's mind works for design and and, and projects and things like that, uh, I got a little bit of that from Fred uh, while I was at the NAM show in Anaheim, California this year. Um, and I talked to Fred about the double neck from the solo acoustic tour last year. So uh, two really cool conversations, both on my other channel. I'll link them in the description below. So, um, so that's it. You know, I mean, this actually... It's 10 minutes in and I, I kind of want to stick around and talk more. It's fun. It's nice. I don't feel the restrictions I feel on my other channel, which is, hey, I got to get to the point really fast and then make the point and get out uh, here. We're going to converse. We're going to talk. And I'm going to join you in the comments as much as I possibly can. So, you know, answer those questions. Are you going to go see the Sphere show? Do you want, do you really want to go? Even if you can't go or maybe you're not willing to spend that money, like deep down inside, do you really want to go? I haven't really made that decision. I think I do. I think I want to go to those, but I don't really know yet. I got to sleep on it and see. Um, and, you know, what did you think of the Conan Mayer thing? I loved it. I think it was great. I'm going to listen to uh, the clips that they cut out on YouTube, even though I listened to the whole thing again. I think some of those are worth revisiting. And, um, you know, what do you want to see on this? This is, like I said, the inaugural episode of this podcast i'll be doing clips i'll clip some things out from here either in shorts or other videos so you'll see those and uh we'll just experiment see where we're at and i'm uh we're gonna do a subscriber count check while we're while we're on the air here not really on the air i thought about doing this live uh we'll do it live but i decided that we were just gonna go straight to uh the hard drive and then we'll upload from there 363 subscribers so thank you to all 363 of you um i want to start doing more on this channel and this is how it's gonna be i've got some old stuff that we're gonna be putting out as well old mayor mondays if you remember those from my other channel and you want to revisit those from the sob rock era but um you know things like this and some other videos from my old channel my other channel still it's not old still going my other channel bringing them over here that's what's here already and uh we'll see you we'll see you see in the comments see in the comments maybe i'll see you at the sphere <laughs>